Hi everyone, my name is Jen Riley. I'm a diabetes educator and dietitian with the diabetes program at Children's National Hospital. And today I wanted to talk to you all about carbs and healthy eating and how to calculate insulin doses for the carbs that are in your meals and snacks. The first thing we need to talk about before we figure out how to calculate that insulin is which foods have carbs. Now, of course, when it comes to healthy eating, it's important to eat a variety of foods. You need your fruits, you need your veggies, you need your protein foods, and you need some, some kind of fiber. Um, you need lots of healthy foods just to make it balanced. It's important to have a colorful plate. You got that from your fruits and veggies, um, but then you need those carbs, you need those protein foods to keep your energy up as well. So let's first talk about which foods have the carbs. Um, lots of foods have carbs. The majority of the foods on this table have carbs. The importance of knowing which foods have carbohydrates is because when you're taking insulin, foods with carbohydrates are the ones that are gonna raise your blood sugar level. So it's important then to count those carbs so you know how much insulin to give. Uh, carbs are in many, many, many foods. Um, to start, fruits have carbs. So um, bananas, one fruit that has carbs, uh, apples, oranges, all the fruits have carbs, even fruit juices, um, like this Capri Sun, then we also have dried fruit. So whether it be raisins or dried mango, more carbs in these foods. Uh, most veggies do not have carbs. However, there are some starchy veggies that do. Uh, this sweet potato, for example, is one that has a good bit of carbs. So you'll need to count that in your calculations as well. That's gonna raise your blood sugar level. Uh, corn, whether it be on the cob, in the can, frozen, corn will always have some carbs. Um, also regular potatoes and green peas have carbs as well. So while these fruits and veggies are super, super healthy and you need to keep them in your diet, it's important to know how many carbs are in them when it comes to calculating your insulin. Other foods that have carbs. Anything with flour or sugar is gonna have carbs. Um, so that, cut, that starts with, uh, we got some bread over here. So bread has some carbs. There's flour in bread. Even if it's gluten-free bread, it still has rice flour. So that's gonna have some carbs. Um, snack foods have, have carbs. They have flour in them. Uh, mac and cheese, rice, uh, pasta. All of these foods have carbohydrates. Also, some beans and lentils have carbs as well. So these are other foods that you're gonna need to count in your carb calculations. And then the really good stuff, the snack foods and the dessert foods. So cookies, goldfish crackers, more cookies, uh, cakes. These foods all have carbohydrates as well. So when it comes to calculating your insulin doses, you're gonna to wanna to know which of these foods are in your meal, and then we're gonna talk about how to figure out how much insulin to calculate for those foods based on the carb content. Um, one last little category that does have some carbohydrates, um, some dairy foods. So this, this milk will have some carbohydrates. Also yogurt has some carbohydrates. But then to keep it interesting, there are some dairy foods that don't have carbohydrates. Uh, cheese is one. So if you can have a cheese stick, which has no carbohydrates, but when you have a glass of milk, that does have carbohydrates. So it gets a little tricky. Um, but you can keep track of all these things. And what we're gonna do next is we're going to do some sample meals and calculating carbs, and you're going to see it's a lot easier than you think. All right, so now that you know what foods do have carbohydrates, you might be wondering, are there any foods that don't have carbohydrates? And the answer is yes. Uh, all these veggies that don't have the starchiness to them, they are basically carbohydrate free. They're very low in carbohydrates. Um, so these foods don't have carbohydrates and they won't be counted in your carb count when you're trying to figure out insulin. Also a lot of the protein foods, so eggs, cheese, meats, they don't have carbohydrates either. So they won't count into your carb count and you're gonna see that when we do our sample meals. Um, avocado is another, another. it's actually a fruit, but it's another food that doesn't have carbohydrate. I guess it's the only fruit that doesn't have uh, carbohydrates significant enough to count in your carb counts. Uh, other foods include um, nuts and seeds and nut butters, like peanut butter, almond butter. They have some carbohydrates, but low enough that they don't typically raise blood sugar level very much. Um, and you typically don't need to count those foods in your carb counts. Um, 
and also condiments. So mayonnaise, uh, hummus, mustard, even ketchup. Even though it's sweet, we typically don't eat enough ketchup that it's going to be a significant source of carbohydrates when we're doing our calculations. All right, so these are all the foods that might make up your, your day. So next what we're gonna do is do some sample meals so you can see how simple this really can be. All right, now that we've figured out which foods have carbs, let's eat breakfast. For breakfast today, I'm gonna have some Cheerios, cereal. I'm gonna have a hard boiled egg. I'm gonna have some orange juice. I'm gonna put some uh, regular milk on top of that cereal. And then I'm also in the mood for my favorite fruit, which is strawberries. All right, so now there are three ways that we can figure out carbs in these different foods. First of all, let's talk about which foods have carbs. Cereal, it's got grains in it, so that has carbs. The milk, that's one of those dairy foods that has carbs, so I'm gonna to need to count those carbs as well. The orange juice is from fruit, that also has carbs. The hard boiled egg is a protein food, no carbs in that one, so that's one thing I don't have to count. But the strawberries are a fruit, and those have carbs as well. So basically, the majority of the foods in my meal have carbs, and I'm gonna to need to figure out how many. So when we're, when we're trying to figure those carbs out, there are three ways to, that we can do that. Many foods have food labels. So this milk, for example, this is a different brand of dairy milk called Fair Life. So this label uh, has two things that I want to keep my eyes on. One is the serving size, and for this it's one cup. So one cup of this milk has a total carbohydrate amount of six grams. So I need to know the serving size and I need to look at the total carbs. So if I have one cup of this milk, I'm gonna add up six grams of carbohydrate for my carb count. All right, so that's one way, looking at the food label. A second way is using an app or a book called Calorie King. I have a very handy app on my phone and I can look up any food out there. So this is helpful, even if something does have a food label, I'm gonna be able to find it in my Calorie King app. Um, but Calorie King comes in really handy for fresh foods that don't have labels, like these strawberries. I don't know how many carbs are in these, there's no label on them, and that's a good thing. It's good to have lots of foods that don't have labels. That means they're probably found in the produce section of the grocery store. So I can look up whole strawberries in my app, and if I were to look that up now, I see that one cup of whole strawberries has 11 grams of carbohydrates. So I'm gonna measure out one cup of these whole strawberries for my breakfast meal. All right, the third way to try to figure out carbs in a meal is to eyeball it. And this is not something we recommend, and I'm gonna show you why. Um, if I were to eyeball this, these Cheerios, now they say that on the label, it says that one and a half cups of these Cheerios has 29 grams of carbohydrates. So I think I know what a one and a half cups looks like. So I'm going to actually pour that into this bowl. Yeah, that looks about right to me. That's a good size bowl of cereal, one and a half cups. All right, so now let me go ahead and put that in my measuring cup and just see how close I was. Hmm. Okay, that's one cup. I've already made a mess and lost some of my Cheerios. Now I need about half of that, one and a half cups. All right, that's one and a half cups. Look how poorly I estimated that amount of Cheerios. This is probably three cups worth of Cheerios. So eyeballing is not something we would recommend uh, in terms of carb counting your foods. Uh, ideally, you'll use your app, you'll use a book, um, the Calorie King book, or you use those food labels. All right, now, let me clean up this mess and we'll start our breakfast counts. All right, so let's count the carbs in our meal. We've got to count the carbs in the Cheerios, we've got to count the carbs in the milk, we've got to count the carbs in the orange juice, and we've got to count the carbs in the strawberries. So that's four items. All right, so I'm gonna start, I like having a whiteboard at home because I can just count every meal, wipe it down and have it ready for the next meal. All right, so my carbs. First off, we've got the Cheerios. 
So the Cheerios, the label said that one and a half cups was 29 grams of carbs. So I'm gonna measure out one and a half cups and I'm gonna write down 29 grams on my whiteboard. All right, let's measure this out. So we've got, this is a one cup measure, whoops. And then we'll do a half again of that. So that's about one and a half cups of our Cheerios, 29 grams of carbs. Next up, we're gonna add a cup of milk to that. So with my one cup of milk, that's 13 grams of carbs. So let me add that to my list. So one cup of milk, 13 grams of carbs. All right, so we'll put that in. All right, got one cup of milk. Looks good. All right, next up. Next up, I'm gonna have a half cup of orange juice. So in my house, we actually have two of our kids have type one diabetes. So one of our home hacks that we use is we've taken a bunch of our plastic cups and we've marked what one half cup is in Sharpie. So I don't have to use a measuring cup. I can just pour the orange juice up to this line and I know that's half of a cup. All right. There we go, we got our orange juice and a half a cup of this orange juice, and I can tell from the food label, one, one cup is 26 grams of carbohydrates. So half of that would be half a cup, would be 13 grams of carbohydrates. So I'm gonna write that down. All right, one half cup, OJ, 13 grams. All right, final thing, my favorite fruit, my strawberries. So I looked in my app and this was 11 grams of carbohydrates for a cup of whole strawberries. So let me just put some of these in my measuring cup. That looks about right. And I've got one cup of strawberries that I'm gonna enjoy with my breakfast. All right. So we'll add those to our list. One cup of strawberries. is 11 grams of carbohydrate. Now I might think I can do this in my head, but I'm not gonna rely on my head for this, this addition. I'm gonna use my calculator. All right, we have 29 grams plus 13 grams plus 13 grams plus 11. I've got 66 grams of carbohydrates in this meal. All right, so now what I do with that 66 grams, the next step is you'll divide it by what your provider has given you as your carb ratio. So I can give an example, one of my kids at home, his carb ratio for breakfast is 20 grams. So he gets a unit of insulin for every 20 grams of carbohydrates. So I would take this 66 and divide it by 20, and then I would get my total insulin dose. So I'm gonna use my calculator again, 66 divided by 20, 3.3 units of insulin for this meal. All right, and with his insulin pen, I'm gonna round that down to three units. So what I'll do here, I've counted up my carbs, I've measured out my food, I've calculated my insulin, I'll take, I'll, take these three units of insulin, and then I can finally eat. All right? Well, now what happens if I've eaten my bowl of cereal, I had my hard boiled egg, I drank my orange juice, and I can't, I don't really have room for all these strawberries. Well, I've already taken insulin for all these strawberries. So I don't wanna go low from having too much insulin for the food that I've, I've thought I was going to eat. So what I can do is actually it's easier to drink carbohydrates than to eat them. So I can add a couple extra ounces of orange juice and make up for the half of the strawberries that I didn't have. All right, so say I need to make up five or six grams of carbohydrate, I can have another two ounces of orange juice. All right, so I could pour a little bit more in my orange juice cup in this case. 
All right, and you could measure that out two ounces as a quarter of a cup. All right, and now that I've had all the carbs that I've given insulin for, I should be good to go. And I'm, I've had my breakfast, I'm all filled up and energized, and I'm gonna go outside and play. Okay, now let's review how we figure out how much insulin we're gonna give for this meal. It had a total of 66 grams of carbohydrate, and what I do now is I divide that by my carb ratio that was given to me by my provider. In this example, I'm gonna use a carb ratio of one unit for every 20 grams of carbohydrates. So I take the 66 grams and I divide it by 20, and on my calculator, I get 3.3 units. If I'm using insulin by an injection with a pen, that means I round down to a whole unit of three units. So in this case, I would inject three units of insulin. All right, now let's make a dinner. Uh, tonight for dinner, we're gonna have some soft tacos, some chips and salsa and guac on the side, and then some homemade chocolate cake for dessert. So first thing I need to do is figure out which foods have carbohydrates that I need to consider in my calculation. In this meal, I'm gonna have tortillas. So this kind of brand of tortilla, they do have a food label, so I'll be able to tell the carbs from that package. I'm also gonna have the chips, which these also have a food label, so I can again tell the carbs in this food. The salsa and the guacamole are considered uh, low carb foods, they're condiments, so I'm not gonna need to count the carbohydrates in those foods. Um, this is a salsa fresca that we're gonna have with our dinner. Then I'm gonna fill the soft tacos with some chicken that I've cooked with just some spices, uh, some fresh tomatoes chopped up, some cheese, and some sour cream. So all these items are very, very low carb, so I'm not gonna need to consider those in my calculations. And then, even though I might not have dessert with my dinner, I know I'm gonna have it pretty soon after. So I can cons add those carbs from the dessert in my total calculation and give all of that insulin at the beginning of the meal. As long as I don't wait too long to have dessert after dinner, it's fine to group all of those carbs into that one insulin dose and give that at the beginning of the meal. All right, so let's, let's make our meal. All right, so I'm gonna have, I think I'm gonna have two small soft tacos. So each one of these tortillas has 15 grams of carbohydrate. So in my two, that means I'm gonna have 30 grams of carbohydrate. So we're gonna start by building those and I'm gonna use my whiteboard again. All right, I'm gonna write down my carbs. So two tortillas. 30 grams of carbs. All right, so I have those two tortillas. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm gonna wanna eat. and I'm not gonna be hungry after. 30 grams of carbohydrates. All right, now I'm gonna fill those tortillas with a little bit of chicken. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of sour cream. I'm gonna put on some fresh tomatoes. And then also a little bit of shredded cheese. All right, now you can heat those up. You can eat them as is, however you prefer. All right, now in addition to these tacos, I'd like some chips and guacamole and some salsa. So I do need to count the carbohydrates in the chips. Looking at the label, these have, it says 24 chips is about 18 grams of carbohydrate. Um, I'm not sure I really feel like counting out 24 chips and a lot of them are broken. So for this calculation, what I'm gonna do is use my food scale. You don't have to have a food scale to count carbs, but I do find it really handy to have one for certain things like snack foods, sometimes breakfast cereal. Um, so uh, dried fruit actually is another one I like to use that for. So on my food scale, I have this here. Um, I first just need to zero it out. This one has a, a bowl that comes with it, which is nice because then you could even just put your chips in this bowl and take it to the table and have that. But I'll first zero that out. 
And when, in looking at the food label, I see that the 24 chips weigh 28 grams. So I'm gonna just pour out um, in, until I get to the 28 grams on my food scale. All right, oops, got 33, so I'll put a couple back. All right, so to me, that's a lot easier than counting out 24 chips. So I have my chips here, I'll put them on my plate. And I'm gonna write that down on my whiteboard. So the carbohydrates there were 18 grams. All right, so my chips, 18 grams of carbohydrate. All right, now I have my condiments, which I'm not gonna need anything counted for. So I have my salsa and my guacamole. So I can just actually have as much of those condiments as I want. Uh, now, I wanna add the calculation for the chocolate cake with the frosting. This came from a homemade recipe, so I don't have a carb count. I think the, you know, if when ingredients are eyeballed um, and nothing is specifically measured, uh, you do have to you have to do a little bit of guesswork. But I can use my app and I can look in Calorie King to see what a an average size piece of chocolate cake with frosting would count for carbs. Uh, another app you can use is called Figwe, and it, with that you can actually take a picture of the food and it will show you the size on the plate and give you an estimated carb count. And also if, if you're on in, an insulin pump, um, the insulin pumps sometimes have food libraries where you can look up food items. So if you don't have Calorie King or you wanna try another app, there are some other options out there for you. So looking in my app, it looks like a, a um, commercial brand chocolate cake with frosting with this size is about 42 grams of carbohydrates. So I'll just, I might not be exactly right, but I think that's pretty close. So my cake, I'm going to write that down as well, 42 grams of carbohydrate. All right, so what I'm gonna do is add that up. I'm gonna divide again by my carb ratio and figure out how much insulin I need for this meal. Okay, pulling out my calculator. We have 30 grams plus 18 grams in the chips and 42 for the cake. So that's a total of 90 grams of carbohydrate. Okay, 90 grams total for this meal. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna divide that by my carb ratio, which was given to me by my provider, and that's 20, one unit for every 20 grams of carbohydrate, and that comes out to 4.5 units of insulin. And that one I'm gonna round up to five units with our basic rounding rules. If it's 0.5 or more, you round up. If it's 0.4 or less, you round down. So I'm gonna inject five units of insulin for this meal, and then I'll be able to eat it. All right, here's our board again. Okay, now, let's say I've eaten all this food. Maybe I even already ate my chocolate cake and I'm still hungry. What do we do? We've already taken our insulin, and that insulin was simply for these carbs. Well, don't forget that you can still have any of those low carb foods you want and they don't require insulin. So what I could do in this situation is I could have some more of the chicken, I could top it with some of the tomatoes and the cheese and the sour cream and even some guacamole and salsa. I could have almost a little uh, burrito without the burrito, <laughs> uh, without the tortilla. So that's what I would do in this case if I was still hungry. You can still have those protein foods and those the veggies and some of those dairy foods that don't have carbs. That way you don't, you don't leave hungry. Um, if you wanted another piece of cake, you would have to take more insulin for that. So um, you've already had your nice sized dessert, so you can add some more of those low carb foods and be nicely filled up. All right, let's review this meal and how much insulin you need to take for it. Uh, our, we have our two tortillas. Those are 30 grams of carbohydrates. You had your tortilla chips for 18 grams of carbohydrate. And then your piece of chocolate cake was 42 grams of carbohydrate. Adding that all up, that comes up to 90 grams of carbohydrate. What you do with that total is you'll divide it by the carb ratio that your provider has given to you to calculate your insulin. So in this example, we're gonna use 
a carb ratio of a unit for every 20 grams of carbohydrate. So I'll take that 90, divide it by 20, and get 4.5. So I'm gonna round that up to five units, and I would inject five units of insulin for this meal. One thing you may find really handy as you're counting out these carbs in common foods that you eat in your household is you can make a cheat sheet of carb counts and put it inside one of your cupboard doors. Uh, this is something I do in my house so I can look. Those tortilla chips are always 18 grams of carbohydrates. Our favorite tortilla that I always buy, 15 grams of carbohydrate per tortilla. And you can have that list really accessible. That comes in handy for babysitters, grandparents, other caregivers. They can access that list really easily and not have to use an app or anything else. Um, we find that really helpful in my household. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit about carbohydrate counting and how to calculate insulin for food. I just want to remind you that you shouldn't have to change your diet completely when it comes to diabetes. All the foods that are typically in your daily plan and your household can fit, just some need to be accounted for in terms of insulin doses. If you have any more questions about carbohydrates or want to meet with one of the dietitians at Children's National, you can contact us at any time. Uh, you can do one-on-one -on -one appointments and our dietitians are there for you with any questions you have about carbs, nutrition, or healthy eating. Thank you so much.